Hi, I'm George Woodbury from College of the Sequoias in Visalia, California, and this is the thir third part of my Elementary Algebra Final Review. And this review will cover Chapter 4, which deals with systems of linear equations. First thing we'll go over is the substitution method. Uh, whenever you have an, one of your equations that has either x or y isolated, the equation is an ideal candidate for using the substitution method. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of these. We'll try problem 53. Notice that the first equation already has x isolated. x is the same as 4y plus 3, so I can substitute that expression for x in the second equation. Replace x by 4y plus 3. Now I have an equation that just has y in it. I'm going to go ahead and distribute the 2. 2 times 4y is 8y. 2 times 3 is 6. I have a pair of like terms to combine. 8y plus 5y is 13y. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the 6 by subtracting 6 from both sides. And to finish this off, I can divide both sides by 13, and I get y equals negative 1. That's only halfway to a solution. I need a value for x. So I'm going to take this value and substitute it back into the original equation. I'm going to replace y by negative 1 and simplify the right-hand side. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, plus 3 is negative 1. So we write our solution as an ordered pair. x first, negative 1, y second, which happen to also be negative 1. Now we'll move on to take a look at the addition method. This method is pretty useful when you have both equations in standard form, where the x and y terms are both together on one side of the equation. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll try problem 58. Uh, the first thing we check is does the smaller x coefficient go into the larger x coefficient evenly? 4 doesn't go into 6 evenly. We check for y, 3 doesn't go into 5 evenly. So we're going to have to multiply both equations. We either look for the LCM of 4 and 6, 12, and make both of these into some form of 12, or the LCM of 3 and 5 is 15, we can make both of these into 15 y's of some form. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and eliminate the y's because they're already opposite signs. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the top equation by 5. That's going to give me a negative 15 y. At the same time, I'll multiply the second equation by 3. That will give me a positive 15 y, and that will allow me to cancel the variable y. So distribute the 5, 20x minus 15y equals negative 30. Distribute the 3, 18x plus 15y equals 87. Now I can add these two equations together. The y terms cancel. I get 38x equals 57. To finish solving for x, divide both sides by 38. Reduce this to lowest terms and we get 3 halves. Now I need to take this equation back to one of the original equations. I'm going to go ahead and use the second one here. I'm going to plug that in for x, and I'm going to solve this equation for y. 6 times 3 halves works out to be 9 because 2 goes into 6. Oops, sorry about that. 3 times, and 3 times 3 is 9. Uh, subtract 9 from both sides. 5y equals 20, and divide both sides by 5, and we get y equals 4. Now again, we want to write this as an ordered pair. x is 3 halves, comma, y is 4, and there's our solution. We'll take a look now at uh, working with equations that have fractional coefficients. I'll save the decimals for a later uh, word problem. We're going to take a look at problem 61. The goal is to eliminate the fractions from both equations. And whenever you want to clear fractions, uh, you can do that by multiplying by the common denominator, or the LCM of the denominators here. Denominators are 3 and 6. I can multiply this equation by 6. 6 times 2 thirds, x, 6 times 1 sixth y, 6 times 4. 6 divided by 3 is 2, 2 times 2x is 4x, 6 divided by 6 is 1, 1 times 1y is 1y, and finally 6 times 4 is 24. 
speed it up a little bit here for the second one. I'm going to multiply both equations by 3, which is the only denominator. 3 times 5 thirds x is just going to be 5x. The 3's will cancel. Then I have 3 times y and negative 7 times 3. Uh, notice that the x coefficients and the y coefficients are in opposite, so I still have some work to do. If I multiply the top equation by 3, I'll have 3y, which will cancel with my negative 3y. So I can go ahead and add the equations together, cancel the y terms. I get 17x equals 51, and when I divide both sides by 17, I find that x is 3. I'm going to use this solution with my second of the original equations. Um, some students like to plug back into the equations that don't have fractions, but if you've made a mistake from this first step to the second step, you'll never catch it there. Okay. So I'm going to plug in 3 for x in the second equation. 5 thirds times 3 is just 5, so I'm left with 5 minus y equals negative 7. Subtract 5 negative y equals negative 12, divide by negative 1, and I get my solution 3 comma 12. Uh, last problem we'll take a look at for this video is a word problem. Uh, we'll take a look at a coin problem. Lose has 37 coins in a purse, some dimes, the rest are quarters. Uh, the value of the coins is $5.95. How many dimes does she have? So we're going to let the number of dimes be represented by the variable D and the number of quarters by the variable Q. Our first equation comes from the fact that there are 37 coins. So if we add the number of dimes to the number of quarters, the result is 37. The second equation comes from the value of the coins. Each dime is worth 10 cents, so 0.10d. If we add that to the amount of money in quarters, 0.25, cent, uh, 0.25 times q, we're told that the total value is 595. Okay. So we have two equations. We can go ahead and solve that. Um, Notice that you could use substitution here because it would be quite easy to isolate D or Q, but I'm going to continue to use uh, the approach of the addition method. I'm going to start by multiplying the second equation by 100. What that will do is move the decimal points two places to the right, clearing the equation of decimals. Now my target is going to be this 10D. If I multiply the top equation by negative 10, I'll have a negative 10D, which will cancel out with the positive 10D. Multiply negative 10 by all three terms. Those cancel. And I'm going to be left with 15Q equals 225. Divide by 15. And I find that Q is equal to 15. I can take this solution and plug it back into the first equation to easily solve for D. Uh, put in 15 for Q, subtract 15 from both sides, and we get that D is 22. Uh, we were asked for how many dimes Luz has, and D represented the number of dimes, so Luz has 22 dimes. Okay, uh, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave a comment on the video, or you can reach me through the contact page on my website, georgewoodbury.com. Uh, if you'd like a full copy of this final review or the answer key, uh, you can ask, that, ask for that at the same time. Thanks and good luck.